Hi, it's Morgan. Welcome back to my channel. Happy International Women's Day! In celebration of International Women's Day, I thought I would share with you some of my favorite women superheroes. So this list is not based on how badass they are or how tough or necessarily the best. If you try and look for a standard, you're, you're not going to find one. The only reason for me making this list is purely my own personal favorites. So starting with number 10, I have Jubilee from X-Men. I love Jubilee. She's just amazing. She is a teenager who has explosive powers, firework powers, and she starts as like a street, a, a mall rat. I think what they called her, a mall rat. But basically, she's very poor, lives on the streets, has to make her own. She comes and joins the X-Men, and she's just a really cool student. She's a very relatable teenage girl. Number nine, I have Storm, Aurora Monroe. I love Storm, she's amazing. My best friend growing up always liked Storm, and she would always play Storm, so I feel like I have kind of this extra, like, Storm is one of my best friends, but she is a very badass superhero character, especially in the comics. Storm is also from X-Men, and she has weather power. She can control the weather. She's a very, very well-rounded character. Sometimes she's very tough, sometimes she's a little bit more vulnerable. I just admire her in so many situations, and I would be so afraid of her if I met her in real life, but she's really cool. I loved how they did her in Apocalypse, because I feel like X-Men Apocalypse, the new movie, because I feel like that captures her character in the comic books more than the other movies, even though I still really liked her in them. She's a really strong leader, and she is not afraid to uh, tell you how it is. Next, I have my DC character, Selena Kyle from Gotham specifically. This is Catwoman, but I absolutely love the way that she's portrayed on the TV show Gotham. She's younger, she's just kind of a girl on the streets who learns to fend for herself, and she kind of hangs out with Bruce, sometimes she helps him, sometimes she steals from him. She's got a lot of spunk and she's a really cool, fascinating character and I'm really interested to see how that show takes her character because I've never been a big Catwoman fan. I haven't disliked Catwoman, but I was never interested in her. But that show made me really interested. Number seven, we're back to Marvel and I have Peggy Carter. You know, I'll be honest, I didn't really know much about her until the Captain America movie and I liked her. She was okay, she was a cool love interest, but I still wasn't like sold on her. And then they made Agent Carter, and I absolutely love that show. I love her character. I love her personality. She's so unique. She, I mean, I guess technically she might not be a superhero because she doesn't have superpowers, if that's your definition, but she's still very much a hero, and especially in that time and the role that she's taking on and how, like, everything about her is just so much more amazing because of the circumstances that she's in. And I just, she's like goals. She's an icon and a role model. I really like Agent Carter. Number six, we are back to X-Men, kind of, and that is Emma Frost. I say kind of because she wasn't technically an X-Men for a very long time, and now she runs the school, which is awesome. Again, Emma Frost was one of those characters that I didn't like initially. She is really flat in the movies, and a lot of the adaptations that I've seen her in, but in the comics I finally read her backstory, Emma Frost, and that book kind of sold me on her because you see where she's coming from and everything that she's been through. Emma Frost is a very morally gray character. She's not evil and she never wants to hurt anyone, but she struggles with making the right decisions based on the situation she's in. There sometimes isn't a very good decision, and she's seen so many people treat her in so many bad ways that a lot of times she has a very cynical, she's developed a very cynical view of the world. So I think she's a very realistic character, she's an admirable in her own way character, but she's also just fascinating to see um, that kind of redemption story in a way. You know, she starts off in the Hellfire Club, she starts off a villain, and then she ends up running Xavier's school and taking over and being this amazing teacher and mentor to all of these young mutants. At number five, moving away from comic books and into TV shows, we have Korra from The Legend of Korra. She is, of course, the Avatar and can control all four elements, which makes her pretty badass just by that. It's also her role to kind of get everyone together and be diplomatic, but her personality is not diplomatic. She's very uh, headstrong, spunky, in your face, it's gonna be my way or the highway kind of personality. Of course, she grows and she becomes, she's able to um, think before she acts, and I liked seeing that development of her. But I also just really enjoy her personality because she's one of those people who's given this role of responsibility and she's not quite fit for it. She still has to develop those skills, which, you know, she's a teenager. We all have some sort of skills that we're lacking. She doesn't follow the rules a lot. She does things her own way, and I can relate to that, and I admire that, so, Cora. Number four, we're going with another X-Men, and that is Rogue. I love all adaptations of Rogue, more so in the comics and the cartoons than in the movies. 
still like her in the movies, but she's a very different personality. Her mutation makes it so she can't touch people without hurting them, which is a really big problem. You know, that would be really annoying to have in real life, more so than annoying, just like debilitating. So of course, there's a lot of emotional drama and internal struggles that go along with that. She's got a lot of angst, which I love, but she doesn't wallow in it, which is admirable. And she can get out there and fight the fight and do good and have good days. She has good days and she has bad days. You know, she's not always like, oh, what was me? There's still that optimism underneath Barry that she has to find sometimes. Um, she can be really funny, she can be really sarcastic, and I just really enjoy seeing her interactions with other characters. Number three, I have Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride is normally my go-to answer for my favorite superhero character because I loved her so much as a child. She is funny, she's spunky, she can come across a little bit ditzy, but she's actually very intelligent. She's optimistic, and she's kind, and she's caring, but if you mess with her or her friends, she will not tolerate that. Her mutation is being able to move through objects, so it's not a very aggressive power, um, but she still learns to fight. She'll go into the bad guy's secret lair and like destroy all their technology, so everyone else can fight and she sneaks in and, you know, destroys the machine of doom. Number two, I have Katara from Avatar The Last Airbender, which is my new favorite show of all time. Well, in my top three favorite shows of all time. Katara is amazing. She can control water, that's her element, um, which is not my favorite element. I prefer fire, but you know, Katara does, she does a lot with it, and I just really liked her. You just see her grow into this really mature, kind, caring woman who can still just destroy everything with her massive water bending abilities. And then there are those episodes where she goes and she asks to see the master and the master's like, I'm not gonna teach you because you're a girl. And she's like, mm -mm -mm, look how cool I am. And then she like, you know, is amazing and uses her water powers and proves that she is actually like one of the best waterbenders of all time. You go Katara. You go Katara. Number one, my all-time favorite female superhero is none other than Buffy from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like Kitty, Buffy has this fun, spunky, teenage girl personality. Um, she's also hilarious. She totally takes the damsel in distress stereotype and flips it on its head because she's not the brightest girl in the book. She's not stupid. Intelligence isn't her strength, we'll put it that way. And she's not very studious, so she's not like academically motivated. She just literally was kind of your typical teenage high school girl who finds out that she's supposed to save the world from vampires. And um, she, she does a pretty good job of it. But she also wants to be normal. She doesn't let it take over her life. She doesn't, I mean, something like that kind of does and you know in the end she has to accept that that this is her role and she's not going to be normal but for the first few seasons she has that she balances her normal life and I want to go shopping and hang out with my friends and go to the mall oh look there's a vampire let me run and stab it and okay I'm back now sorry it's, it's, it's so dirt in my hair she's just so much fun to watch and I love all of the women on that show the men too it's a great show if you haven't seen it definitely check it out well those are my top 10 favorite female superheroes. I would love to hear a few of yours in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!